When the United Kingdom decided to leave the European Union in 2016, the country was in need to forge new international alliances with its closest partners. That being the case, a proposal started to gain immensely support to bring together a group of former colonies which still has much in common with Britain. As a result, Kenzuk was born, an acronym that incorporates Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. The idea to unite English-speaking countries, however, is not new. Since the dissolution of the British Empire in the 20th century, there have been initiatives which aimed to create deeper relationships between Britain and the newly independent countries. But so far, none has been successful if considered the level of cooperation proposed by Kenzak. Still, Kenzak can actually work if it puts in practice a specific framework of cooperation between the four countries. In this video, we'll see how Kenzuk can actually project itself as an emergent power block. The United Kingdom, Canada, Australia and New Zealand have many things in common which could actually facilitate the cooperation between the four countries. As a matter of example, even with some minor differences, they share the Westminster system of parliamentary constitutional monarchy, they have the same head of state, Queen Elizabeth II, they all have English as the most spoken language in their territories, and finally, they all have the English common law as their fundamental legal system. The countries can also count on their population's approval for working together as an emerging power bloc, since 76% of Canadians, 73% of Australians, 82% of New Zealanders and 68% of Britons support the establishment of Kenzuk. With these impressive numbers in a collection of shared cultural constitutional and linguistic ties, it's necessary then to analyze the areas which Kenza countries might further their cooperation. The first identified area of cooperation is diplomacy and international organizations. Since all the Kenza countries strongly support the international rules-based order established after the Second World War, it is much easier for them to achieve consensus in conversations related to climate change, international trade, human rights, and defense of democracy and the rule of law. As a result of this common understanding on a variety of issues, the four countries could promote their shared visions and defend each other's positions in international forums such as the United Nations, or even in the regional arrangements that they are members. One example would be to use the UK's permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council to defend the shared commitments of the Kenza countries in terms of international security or even non-proliferation goals. The second area which the Kenza countries could further their cooperation is between their populations. Considering the status of the English language and the presence of the English common law system in all the four countries, as already mentioned, many opportunities can be explored regarding, for example, the mutual recognition of qualifications between professionals in all the Kenzuk countries. With Canadians living and working in Britain, Australians in New Zealand, and so on, the countries would take a step further to overcome their geographical setbacks, and as a result, the development of new personal ties would also mean new opportunities for commercial 
and investment ties between Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. Therefore, has just recently been adopted between the UK, Australia and New Zealand, mutual recognition agreements would become a great asset if expanded to include all the Kanzuk countries. A third pillar of the proposed Kanzuk partnership could include cooperation in research and innovation. According to the most recent Global Innovation Index, the Kanzuk countries perform well, with all of them being ranked among the top 30 most innovative economies in the world. However, it's necessary that these countries collectively engage in more investments related to the key frontier technologies of the 21st century if Kanzuk really wants to emerge as a power block. Considering this objective, a good starting point would be to establish matchmaking platforms between innovators in universities and public research facilities in all the four countries through an innovation and research mobility scheme. Hence, with mutual programs between universities and colleges, the Kansas countries could achieve good results considering the high standard of education of institutions in Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. The fourth and thus final identified area of cooperation is defense capabilities. The four countries already share close ties in terms of defense and military exercises, with some of them also including the United States, such as the Five Eyes arrangement. Still, as the world is going through turbulent times with the Russian invasion of Ukraine and all the developments of this crisis, it's clearer by the day that to have deep and enduring alliances is a matter to be greatly considered by the leaders of each country. Therefore, by sticking together, the four Kenza countries, which already position themselves as regional powers in their respective continents, could explore this advantage to construct a more aligned strategic dialogue regarding issues of global security reach. That being the case, further interoperability between allied defense systems and armed forces could work as a pillar of this proposed strategic approach concerning Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. So, Kanzuk really does have the potential to emerge as a power block in international relations. In combination with the areas of cooperation mentioned, the four countries also have economic and social indicators such as a combined nominal GDP of $7 trillion in 2021, which would add to the importance of their new group. Moreover, a cooperation framework that seeks greater consultation between their leaders, closer integration in terms of trade and investments, and a robust strategic partnership could actually serve as a driving force to transform the Kanzak proposal into reality. Finally, by reassuring the sovereignties of the four countries and the accountability of governments to their own parliaments, Kanzak, under the framework discussed in this video, would not be an international organization, nor would it have a permanent secretariat, but it would work as a group of close countries which took their historical, linguistic and constitutional ties to a new level of partnership. And what do you think of Kanzak? Let your opinion in the comments below and I'll be glad to read your feedback. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons. Big thanks!